Hi, you're listening to or watching the End All Disease podcast slash video presentation number six, where we're going to assess and reevaluate what's been going on with the war on cancer. This one's called Where's the Cure? Two thousand twenty marks the fiftieth anniversary of the war on cancer. Yes, it was declared in nineteen seventy, and they've had almost fifty years to find a cure for us as promised. What has been accomplished in that time? This presentation today is based off my book called The Cancer Industry, and we're gonna evaluate and reevaluate where we are at with that war and the initiative to end cancer. If the answers are unsatisfactory, we're gonna find a better way forward and solve it ourselves. But first, I want to tell you a little about my background and my story and why I have an interest in this. When I was 11 years old, my mother was diagnosed with cancer. Doctors told us they caught it early and that they were going to rush her in for surgery and radiotherapy treatment. So when I heard the news, I was like my sister and my dad and the rest of my family. Yeah, we were shocked, but the fact that they caught it early and the fact that they're going to rush her in for treatment with some of the best doctors in Canada, uh, that had me feeling hopeful. I never really, it didn't really sink in as something that I was afraid of. I was more just looking forward to getting it over with and watching her heal and recover and then having my mother back. So they rushed her in for treatment. And I should mention it was actually ovarian cancer that she had. And essentially the doctors found a precancerous lesion on her ovaries that was about the size of a baby fingernail. Not very big at all. So they went in, they chopped it off. Seems pretty harmless, seems like a good idea. And then they said, we're gonna use radiotherapy treatment just to ensure that it never comes back as a safeguard. So that sounds pretty promising coming from a doctor. After treatments, there were cutbacks at the hospital at the time. So I think they would have preferred to have her in sooner for a checkup just to see how things went, but she didn't end up getting back in for about six months. And when they did, the doctors looked again and assessed the situation and basically they found cancer had spread to her hip area so once we heard that that was not very great news <laughs> we were expecting a recovery after the first treatment and now all of a sudden she has more cancer it's spread but at the same time the doctor said things are going to be okay we're going to put her in for rush her into chemotherapy this time and i had no idea what that was at the time i was 11 years old but it sounded promising again so i put my faith in it and I was hopeful, just like my sister, my dad, the rest of my family. We were hopeful for a full recovery. Of course, as soon as she got treated, she went from being basically symptom-free. And by the way, when she was diagnosed, she literally had no symptoms. There was, she went from being like a healthy mother to apparently a cancer patient. So it was kind of strange. And then all of a sudden, she goes into chemotherapy. And she went from zero symptoms to her health taking a rapid and severe decline immediately following treatment. Needless to say, she suffered many horrific side effects, including she couldn't talk, couldn't eat solid food. I remember having to bring her liquid shakes that she could drink because she couldn't swallow food because it had destroyed the cells in her throat and her esophagus going down to her stomach. Um, she couldn't sleep at night. At, like Shortly after treatment, I remember her, she was actually able to come home with us, which was kind of great. That was a hopeful thing, but... At the same time, what happened was kind of a disaster. She couldn't sleep, so she would stay up late at night. I'd be upstairs in my bed trying to sleep. My sister in the room next to me in her bed trying to sleep, and my father in the room beside us trying to sleep as well. And I could hear my mother downstairs crying, whimpering and sobbing. And trying to be quiet, though. You could tell she was trying to muffle it so that we could all sleep undisturbed, but little did she know I could hear every cry, every whimper, and every call out to God to put an end to her suffering. And a few days after treatment as well, to top that off, her legs swol were swollen. They swelled up about three times to so the top, like her quads. They swelled up about three times the size, and all of a sudden she couldn't walk. So she went from crying and pacing back and forth downstairs to literally not being able to walk so she had to go into a wheelchair from that point on. So from a completely healthy looking mother to all of a sudden absolutely destroyed and suffering horrific side effects like that was a shock. Needless to say, her health did not improve at all. And after about six months of this torture, her body, mind and spirit had had enough and she passed on 
it took about 15 years, 15 years before I realized what had actually happened there. And for about 15 years, I just felt like destroyed. I felt angry at her and at the world. Like, why me? And why did you leave me kind of thing? I didn't realize for a long time that I was mad at her too. What I realized was that my mother died so that my life could have purpose. She gave me a story that could move people and inspire others. And she gave me a mind and heart that could find the answers to the disease that the world was literally dying to know. Based on that and that newfound worldview, I wrote two books on cancer, actually one's on the cancer industry, which this talk is based on. The books that I had written are my gift to the world and that's my life's purpose. And you're watching it or listening to it unfold right now. As I said before, the war on cancer was declared in 1970 by US President Richard Nixon with the following words while campaigning for president. I will also ask for an appropriation of an extra $100 million to launch an intensive campaign to find a cure for cancer. And I will ask later for whatever additional funds can effectively be used. The time has come in America when the same kind of concentrated effort that split the atom and took man to the moon should be turned toward conquering this dreaded disease. Let us make a total national commitment to achieve this goal. So as you can see, the objective of the war on cancer was to cure cancer. 49 years later, what have they achieved? So the results of this campaign, this declared war, well, as I said, it's been 49 years. Research spending in that time is an estimated $500 billion of donations generously given to cancer societies and foundations for research. So if you give someone 49 years and $500 billion for research, what kind of results would you expect? I know what I would expect. And in reality, what the results have been the industry has come up with literally nothing useful for preventing or reversing cancer. What do you do if you give someone $500 billion in 49 years to solve a problem and they come up with nothing? You fire them and you find another way. As a result, according to the official facts and figures of the American Cancer Society, more people are diagnosed and dying of cancer than ever before. If that's not a failure, I don't know what is. Let's look at the two possible causes of this monumental failure. Possibility one is that the people involved are incompetent and their astonishing lack of advancement is undoubtedly the most spectacular failure in human history. And possibility two, safe and effective treatments have been found, but they've been suppressed from the public by the industry. Let me ask you this. If you had a business that made $126 billion per year, would you put yourself out of business? Whatever the case, we will never get the answers from these people. If they're incompetent, they are incapable of giving us the answers. And if their actions are criminal in nature, they will simply not give us the answers because it's too profitable for them to do so. Therefore, we must find a new approach to solving cancer so we can put this disease behind us once and for all. A more rational, reasonable approach to solving cancer is what we're about to formulate using common sense. The bottom line is this. If mainstream cancer treatments work to enhance the length and quality of life of patients, then we should keep using them. But if they are reducing the lifespans of patients, then we need to stop their use immediately worldwide and find suitable replacements. Here's some more common sense for you. Surgical tumor removal has been performed on cancer patients for literally hundreds of years. A couple hundred years ago, by the way, it was highly looked down upon by the public. And today it's completely normalized and accepted as a mainstream treatment. But that's a whole other story we'll get to in a future presentation. Chemotherapy was first used on cancer patients in 1946 and therefore has been in use for 73 years. Radiotherapy was put to use on cancer patients shortly after the discovery of x-rays in 1895 and therefore has been in use for more than 120 years. Surgery for hundreds of years, chemotherapy 73 years, radiotherapy more than 120 years. That is plenty long enough since we're not being told publicly by the so-called authorities, we're gonna look at it ourselves. And every single human being alive must look at this information and decide for themselves whether they want these treatments or whether the alternatives that are out there appear better. And in order to make this decision, you must be highly informed. The following subjects require a full and complete public investigation, including all available scientific and anecdotal evidence. Surgery, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, cancer screening programs, and evidence of suppression. As I mentioned, I've written a book on this. It's called The Cancer Industry. And in total, there are over 600 scientific and clinical references in here. So 
based on this book, I'm going to extract all the scientific evidence, perhaps not all, but most of the scientific evidence, and put it into presentations on all five of those subjects that require investigating. may not be immediately, but I will pepper them in to the End All Disease video and podcast series as we go. Once this information is out there and you can look at it yourself, you can read the research for yourself and you can decide for yourself and make an informed decision rather than just letting your doctor sign your life away or do whatever he wants with you, which may or may not be the best thing. Only you know what's best for you, but the only way you can decide what's best for you is if you are well informed. So that is the purpose of this. And this is how we're going to go forward with solving the disease of cancer. I'm going to finish this with by reading the introduction chapter to the cancer industry. It's been nearly 50 years since the war on cancer was declared, and yet more people are diagnosed with cancer and dying from the disease than ever before. I find it extraordinarily difficult to believe that after spending $500 billion on cancer research since 1970, the cancer establishment has come up with literally nothing useful for preventing or curing the disease. If it's true, then they are incompetent, and their astonishing lack of advancement is undoubtedly the most spectacular failure in human history. But if cures or effective treatments have been systematically suppressed from the public, then their actions are criminal in nature, and the blood from over 530 million people who died in the 20th century alone from cancer could be on their hands. Whatever the case may be, I intend to make it clear. Up until this point on humankind's pursuit to end cancer, our primary mistake has been entrusting the same people who profit from treating cancer to provide us with a cure. I haven't spoken to anyone who didn't understand this concept. There is no money in a cure. Why would an industry that generates over $125 billion a year put itself out of business? It wouldn't. So who then do we look to for answers? In 1947, the young American physicist Ernest Sternglass wrote a letter to Albert Einstein telling him about the work he had been doing to reduce X-ray radiation doses during fluoroscopy. To his surprise, Einstein showed great interest in his work and invited the 23-year-old to meet him at Princeton University, where they talked for five hours. And that had an enormous effect on my life, recalls Sternglass, because among other things, he encouraged me to pursue my theory and I finally got it all published. At the end of the conversation, Einstein issued a very important warning. Don't go back into academia, he said. They will kill every bit of originality out of you. In order to become a full professor, you have to get approved on every level, and you cannot question the existing ideas too much or else you won't get promoted. Have a shoemaker's job for the rest of your life so that you can do something useful for humanity. My purpose in writing this book is to explore the possibility that, hidden among the vast amounts of information drifting aimlessly through cyberspace, a cure for cancer has already been found. And while a doctor might fear losing his medical license or job for completing such work, a layperson with no medical background like myself can fearlessly make a controversial conclusion when the evidence warrants one. This pure and unobstructed curiosity combined with discipline and an intention to simplify complex information will render a final product on the cutting edge of science that can be understood by those who need it. The American Cancer Society estimates that almost half of everybody alive today will develop cancer at some point in their lives. And the World Health Organization predicts a 50% rise in cancer diagnoses by the year 2020. Unless we figure out what is fueling this explosion of cancer rates and alter our course, a time will soon come when nobody escapes the ravages of this disease. The future of human civilization is at stake, and only one thing is certain. If the answers are out there, they will be found.